good day, everyone, and welcome to the Asian American Justice Center's Asian Florida Political Poll Conference Call. Today's conference is being recorded. At this time, I would like to turn the conference over to Ms. Leonie Campbell. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Leonie Campbell-Williams. I'm the Director of Communications for the Asian American Justice Center. Um, today, we're going to announce the results of an oversample of Florida voters and a political poll of Asian American voters. Um, on our call today, joining us, the poll was conducted in conjunction with Lake Partners Research <laughs> and APIA Vote and the Asian American Justice Center. Today we have speakers joining us from AAJC, APIA <laughs> Vote, and also from Lake Partners. I'll be turning the call over shortly to Mimula, who is the Executive Director and President of the Asian American Justice Center. Following. Ms. Mo, you will hear from Christine Chen, who is the Interim Executive Director for APIA Vote. You will also hear from a community leader from Florida, Ms. Winnie Tang. And following Ms. Tang, you will hear from Celinda Lake, who is the Principal at Lake Partners Research. So now we'll hear from Ms. Mua. Thank you, and I want to thank you all for joining the call again. My name is Mee Moore. I'm the President and Executive Director of the AJC, the Asian American Justice Center, a member of the Asian American Center for Advancing Justice. AJC has a long history in working to protect the rights and interests of Asian American voters. We worked closely with our affiliates, the U.S. Department of Justice, national civil rights partners, community partners, and key stakeholders on a number of initiatives, including Section 203 of the Voting Rights Act, requiring jurisdiction to provide bilingual voting assistance to registered voters. AJC has worked for years to ensure the AAPI community knows their right to vote and understands the laws that directly affect their community. AJC conducted workshops that focused on how community members can work with election officials to make sure their language assistance is effective and accessible to the AAPI community. We've also done some work in Section 208 of the Voting Rights Act to ensure that voters get the assistance they need from the persons of their choice in order to cast a ballot. AJC is launching a voter education campaign to ensure that the Asian American voters know their rights. We have also engaged in voter protection programs to ensure that Asian American votes are not suppressed, so we are partnering with the Coalition of Partners to operate a nationwide voter protection hotline, and we have attorneys who have done polling monitoring to ensure the rights of Asian Americans are protected. For the 2010 census, we also engaged in redistricting, where we partnered with the NAACP Legal Defense Fund and MALDEF on a national redistricting handbook, and we work with local community-based organizations to ensure fair redistricting. We have also engaged with our affiliates in exit polling in different states across the country to determine if the needs of Asian American voters are met at the poll. In the courts where AHAC has filed briefs before the United States Supreme Court on every major case that impacts the protection of Asian Americans and their ability to have their votes count. Our new survey is a major component of our overall work and is particularly important and timely in understanding the Asian American electorate. As a Hmong American and as a former elected official, I fully understand the influence the Asian American community has in the electorate today and their potential to change the political landscape of this nation. I also know from practice and experience that political leaders who fail to, who, who embed a strategy to engage the Asian American communities as, a, as part of their core strategy will be rewarded by a margin of victory, and those who ignore us do so at their own peril. This survey brings to light and to the mainstream electorate the knowledge that many in our community have known for a long time. Asian Americans are the fastest growing minority group in the United States. With over 17 million AAPIs, the community has nearly doubled since 2000. It is widely known that there are, there are high Asian American populations in states such as California, New York, and Hawaii. But the untapped secret is that the Asian American population is growing at an astounding rate with approximately two-thirds of the states, 36 states, showing growth rates of over 50% since the last census. 
Many of these states play a pivotal role in determining the leadership in the White House and Congress. There is still a lack of outreach from our political leaders and candidates. In the last two years, only 23% of AAPIs were contacted by the Democratic Party, and only 17% of AAPIs were contacted by the Republican Party. Current polls show that our next president will likely be determined by the slimmest margin. The leadership in Congress is also up for grabs. As we head into this critical election, I call upon our leaders and future leaders to take note of the AAPI community, for this untapped community to make the difference for a candidate who wants to head to Washington or a party who wants to lead our nation in the White House or in Congress. Thank you. Thanks, me. Now we'll hear from Christine Chen. But I also want to let participants know that we will have a Q&A session following the presentation by Sorinda Lake. And to join the queue for the Q&A, um, all you need to do is press star 1 on your telephone. Christine? Great. Hi, this is Christine Chen. I'm the Executive Director for Asian and Pacific Islander American Vote. Um, it's a national nonpartisan organization that works with local community partners to mobilize Asian Americans and Pacific Islanders in the electoral and civic participation at the national, state, and local levels. Um, we're very focused on developing new capacity to do this work with each of our local partners. Um, Asian American Pacific Islander voters essentially are the nation's fastest growing racial group and are expected to vote in record numbers this fall. Our voters will support candidates who best engage Asian Americans, a demographic with increasing political clout. We've continued to increase our numbers on the voter rolls. For example, in 2008, 600,000 new Asian American voters entered the electorate. And today, roughly one in four congressional districts have AAPI residences above the 5% threshold, and AAPIs exceed 5% of the population in nearly 600 cities and municipalities. And Florida is no different. Where elections are being won in close margins, it's important to recognize this constituent base in these areas. Florida is home to over half a million AAPIs. In addition to being a key presidential state, there will be nine key U.S. House races, including a new congressional seat due to reapportionment, and the entire state legislature is on the ballot this year. AAPIs in the states are also concerned about the economy and the housing crisis. In addition, community advocates have met with legislative resistance in their attempts to repeal an archaic state law, the Alien Land Law of 1926, which bans land ownership by AAPIs. So voters are really looking for candidates to listen to their demands. There is essentially great enthusiasm to participate in the elections from our voters. An overwhelmingly majority of Asian Americans survey, nearly five out of six, said they will vote this November, and half of them are more enthusiastic than ever to vote, a trend that's continued from the last few presidential cycles. But API Vote and our local community partners are also focused on eliminating barriers to our, vote, to our voters, especially for the first-time voters. Racial and ethnic barriers and immigration laws have historically prevented a large majority of Asians from becoming naturalized citizens and engaging in this democratic process. But we have seen positive changes, and the data supports the fact that our community are ready to exercise their right to vote. For example, the citizenship rate of naturalization of 58% is the highest of any major racial ethnic group. So as we move forward, um, we will actually work with our community partners to make sure that our voters understand the process on how to register to vote, especially with the ever-changing laws that are happening in Florida, as well as um, what are their rights when it comes to um, voter identification laws um, when it comes to Election Day. Um, by eliminating these, we, what we're trying to do is eliminate as many barriers as possible to our community by translating materials, using existing networks within the Asian American Pacific Islander organizations, and so that way we can actually have volunteers who are trained to actually assist with those who are limited English proficient. Um, API Vote has continued to organize trainings and technical assistance with our community partners for the last few months across the country. So at this time, um, what I'd like to do is actually turn it over to one of our partners, the Asian American Federation of Florida, President Winnie Tang. Hi, good morning. Uh, thank you, Christine. Uh, my, 
This is Wendy Tang, President for Asian American Federation of Florida. And we are founded in 1984. It's a 501c3 coalition that aims to provide a forum for discussing issues of common interest to Asian Americans and to promote and enhance appreciation of a cultural diverse Asian Pacific American community in Florida. And the Asian American Federation of Florida is a statewide organization made up of more than 100 of Bangladesh, Burmese, Cambodian, Chinese, Filipino, Indian, Iranian, Korean, Laotian, Taiwanese, Thai, Turkish, Vietnamese, and Pacific Islanders, faith-based and community-based organization, business, and also media. In 2010, we have successfully organized a census account of the Asian population to achieve a record high of over half a million compared to a quarter million Asian population in uh, 2000. Based on for the election department's figures, Asian American registered voter numbered 66,706, which is 1.1 percent of for the voters. Currently, we have over 275,000 eligible Asian American voters in Florida. So we have capitalized this opportunity to organize the 2012 Asian American Voter Initiative to increase Asian American voter registration and mobilize Asian voter participation in Florida. We are privileged to work with national Asian organizations such as APIA Vote, Asian American Justice Center, the Norman Mineta Leadership Institute to provide a framework for civic engagement and political organization of the Asian American community in Florida. In addition, we have worked with the Asian American Legal Defense and Education Fund to protect the rights of Asian American voters for the upcoming 2012 election. To take off this initiative, we have just held a successful statewide Asian American voter engagement workshop last weekend in Orlando. Over 50 of our committee leaders, members, and youth attending the one-day intensive training provided by APIA Vote. Through the training, we learned about voter engagement skills and understood how increasing Asian American voter participation can make a real impact on issues we care about, such as the economy, education, health care, employment discrimination, and immigration. Despite for this new election voter registration law, our committee leaders and youth have already committed to organizing more local voter registration drives to achieve more history making accomplishment by registering, registering more Asian American voters through numerous opportunities such as the National Bangladesh Convention in September in Orlando and the South Florida Dragon Ball Festival in September in Miami. We will engage actively for more get out the vote activities during the week of early voting. We will name the first day of early voting the Asian American Voting Day to become more visible in the 2012 election. So we won't be ignored or left out in the decision-making process impact our community. Thank you, uh, Ms. Campbell. Thanks so much, Winnie. Now to share the results from the poll, we have Soren Delate from Lake Research Partners. Thank you very much, and it's uh, really an honor to be on this call and part of this very, very exciting effort. Uh, this is a very, very part of a very, very robust um, polling project that we did, uh, where we looked at a nationwide survey of 700 Asian American voters, and then oversampled so that we could really look in depth in each state in Florida, Illinois, Nevada, and Virginia. And this is the most comprehensive and really first of its kind um, political survey done of the Asian American Pacific Islander population. Of course, what we're focused on today, and if we turn to slide three, is the what's going on in Florida. And um, Florida is uh, unique and a hotbed and a battleground, and the uh, Asian American population um, shows this as well. Asian Americans more divided politically in Florida than other states. Uh, they are more Republican, um, although 46% still say they're Democratic, 33% um, Republicans, 20% Independent. Um, nationwide, 53% of Asian American Pacific Islanders say that they're democratic. democratic. 
So in Florida, you have a real battleground, and both parties uh, have enough voters um, to um, make this a real competition. And the Asian American vote, and I'll talk about that in a moment, could definitely make the difference uh, in a close election. Florida Asian American voters are very negative about the direction of the country. Only 20% say things are going in the right direction. 62% say things are going in the wrong track. This is significantly more negative uh, than the country overall. Uh, they are also positive about the direction of the country for them, uh, negative about the direction of the country for themselves, and very pessimistic about the economy. Not surprisingly, then, uh, this translates into people being uh, Asian American Pacific Islanders in Florida being more negative about the president's job performance. Fifty-five percent say the president is doing a just, fair, or poor uh, job. The voters lean net negative on the president's job performance, where nationwide Asian American Pacific Islanders uh, split on the president's job performance. As we see nationwide, uh, Asian American Pacific Islanders very, very uh, positive personally uh, toward the president. A majority still support the president, 57%, but a higher number than usual support Romney, 29%, and 12% are undecided. Uh, nationwide, 59% um, support the president, only 13% to support Romney. So Romney and the Republicans in general, more competitive among those voters in Hawaii, and this is a battleground state in every way. The generic congressional vote is also uh, much closer, and as some of the earlier speakers noted, uh, the Asian American Pacific Islander vote can make a big difference in congressional races, and there are a lot of congressional races in Florida up for grab. We asked, obviously we couldn't look at individual races, but asked the generic overall, and we found 43% voting Democratic, 33% Republican, and 23% undecided. Um, again, showing that both parties in Florida can make gains and neither can take Florida for granted. Uh, as we've seen, a, a, and someone referred to earlier, an overwhelming trend that um, the Asian Pacific Islander vote has been um, ignored somewhat by both political parties. Few Asian American Pacific Islanders nationwide or in Florida have been contacted by either political party, <laughs> but the Republicans do have a slight edge. 26% say they have been contacted by the Republican Party, 18% uh, by the Democratic Party. That's actually uh, the reverse of what we saw nationwide. Nationwide, we saw more contacts by the Democrats than the Republicans in this community, although the overwhelming story being that neither um, party is reaching out to this very, very rich uh, constituency enough. And while half of uh, Florida Asian American voters are enthusiastic to vote this year, more so than usual, a third say they're also less enthusiastic. So both for turnout efforts and uh, reaching out to uh, voters for persuasion, there is lots of potential for both political parties in this state. If that's the overview, let's look at the specific data. On slide five, you can see kind of a profile of the Asian American vote in Florida. And for anyone who's interested, obviously, we can provide the national report as well that shows the national comparisons. But let's turn to page six for the first uh, slide to look at. Um, almost 90% of Asian American Pacific Islander voters uh, say that they are likely to vote. 10% uh, say they probably will vote, and a couple of percentage points say they are only 50-50 or unlikely. That's pretty high. Um, by the same token, they, we also have higher, um, uh, you know, more mixed sense of enthusiasm about that vote, so we can't take it for granted. On slide 7, we see that 33% of the AAPI vote in Florida was born at in the U.S., 65% born outside the U.S., and people came to this country in a very, very broad range of ages, um, about a third as young um, young children, a third as young adults, and, uh, and the rest after that. 
83% of the Asian uh, American Pacific Islander votes say that their uh, parents were born in another country. Only 17% in Florida say their parents were born in this country. And this is eligible voters now. On slide nine, how do we reach the Asian American Pacific Islander vote? Uh, television. Uh, is the way to reach everybody, and television remains the major way to reach Asian American voters. Uh, but what's very, very interesting is the uh, increased use of Internet and social media. And, in fact, we've learned in a number of campaigns that some of the Internet advertising to Asian American Pacific Islanders is cheaper than Internet and social media advertising overall, and there's very, very high usage, particularly by age and by demographic group. Newspapers also matter to the AAPI vote, and this is a community, as we've seen throughout the data and throughout the states, uh, that's still reading newspapers. On slide 10, uh, one in five Asian American voters in Florida consume at least some of their news in an Asian language. And uh, one of the things that is valuable here is also, as you'll see in a minute, that having in-language assistance, even though many, many Asian Americans are bilingual, having in-language assistance can increase turnout and increase persuasion. Um, so uh, very important in terms of outreach, very important in terms of um, having maximum efficacy as well. How do Asian Americans feel about the United States? Uh, this is some of the most interesting data for Florida because it's one of the places where Florida is most unique. So on slide 12, um, we see that um, how things are going in the country. Um, Asian American voters in Florida are more negative in their opinion, minus 10 points. Nationwide, they're more positive. But what's really dramatic is how the Asian American community in Florida feels about its own situation. Uh, nationwide, uh, people feel net positive uh, about their own situation. Here in Florida, solidly in that negative. And uh, this really speaks to the unique um, atmosphere in Florida right now. That's followed up by, on slide 13, heightened concern about how poorly the economy is doing in Florida, and 80% saying just fair or poor. That does have on slide 14 some impact on the president's job performance. 41% um, of the voters in Florida say he's doing excellent or good. 56% uh, say he's doing just fair or poor. So net negative job performance nationwide, the president's job performance is split. Having said that, though, on slide 16, you can see that voters still like uh, Barack Obama in Florida quite a bit. Uh, and this is a dynamic that we've seen throughout the um, all of the states and nationwide that Barack Obama very, very personally well liked in the Asian American community. Um, the Democratic Party also net positive and, frankly, ahead of their party identification, but behind Barack Obama. Mitt Romney still has a fifth of the voters who aren't so clear about how they feel and slightly net negative, although these numbers bounce around a lot uh, depending on the time period that you're polling. The Republican Party also slightly net negative at this point in time, um, paying a high price for uh, what voters thought was going wrong in Washington and in Congress. On slide 17, voting for Barack Obama by 28 points. Um, but 29% uh, voting for Romney, that's about more than twice the vote nationwide, and 12% undecided. So plenty of voters for both parties to go get. And a history in Florida of being uh, split in their vote as well. Uh, on slide 18, you can see 47% uh, voting for the president, 24% for McCain, 9% refusing us, and 20% who said, I didn't vote in 2008. Um, Slide 19, the generic congressional vote, um, closer as well in Florida, 43% uh, for the Democratic candidate, 33% for the Republican candidate. That margin much, much closer than what we see nationwide, and 23% undecided. So the Asian American Pacific Islander vote can make a huge difference <laughs> in the key congressional races as well as the national. We compared the parties on a number of issue dimensions, 
And we find that while the Democrats have an advantage on being for the middle class, fairness and equality, health care, values, immigration, national security, there's still a substantial number of voters uh, who aren't sure which party is better, and enough voters, frankly, to put either party in a leadership position. On slide 21, when you get to some of the major issues of the day, taxes, education, jobs, the economy, and the deficit, the parties are much more split. And again, here you have over a third of the voters who um, say they don't have uh, any preference. If both parties could benefit uh, from targeting the AAPI vote and neither party can take this vote for granted, how do they engage these voters? Uh, right now, both parties are in a mode of benign neglect. 18% uh, have been contacted by the Democrats, 26% by the Republicans. Republicans are doing a better job than the Democrats. The Republicans in Florida are doing a much better job than they are nationwide. Um, but there are obviously lots and lots of room for growth in both parties. Slide 24, this vote cannot be taken for granted. 24% uh, said they didn't vote in 2008. You've got 33% who say they're less enthusiastic than they were in 2008. Uh, so there need to be aggressive GOTV as well as persuasion efforts. When we think about reaching this community, uh, in-language assistance uh, also would make about a fifth more likely to vote. And finally, on slide 27, uh, what's the difference that this vote can make? All the difference in the world. In the land of close elections and electoral colleges and hanging chads, um, voters overwhelmingly, the Asian American vote is definitely big enough in Florida to make the difference uh, in the margin of success. There are 88,000 Asian American voters who voted in November 2008, and if they voted, gave Romney, uh, Obama 38-point lead over Romney, that would be a 33,000 vote margin um, if there were similar turnout patterns. Um, so definitely the margin of victory in Florida could be the Asian American vote, and that goes for both parties. Uh, the way to get a victory for the president, the way to keep the president from being victorious uh, often centers on uh, this electorate in such a close state. So let me stop there and turn it back, and delighted to take your questions. Thanks so much, Talinda. Danielle, could you give the instructions on how to get the queue for a question? Absolutely. And ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to ask a question at this time, please press the star key, followed by the digit 1 on your touchtone telephone. And again, that is star 1 for your questions at this time. We'll pause for a moment. Okay, so we have a question from Ms. Rodriguez. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much for uh, this call. This has been very informative. This is Leah rodriguez Tassa from Dwayne Morris and the Miami-Dade Election Reform Coalition. My question deals with language assistance that can increase turnout. Did your survey indicate what types of language assistance would be most uh, likely to increase turnout, and did your survey um, – address issues of the language um, set forth in the ballot versus just general assistance? Thank you. Uh, really, really good questions. And let me say this. Uh, the short answer is we did not. Um, and uh, I can turn it over to other folks to talk about um, uh, the issue of uh, what the experience on the ground has been because uh, the groups on this call have had quite a bit of experience doing that. Um, the Two groups of voters um, who said that in-language assistance would make a particular – it's primarily older Asian-American Pacific Islander votes, and it was heavily in the Chinese-American and Korean-American communities. Uh, in our nationwide survey, we couldn't look at it in Florida, that it said that it would make a difference. But let me turn it over to other folks to talk about what their experience on the ground has been. Winnie, would you like to comment? Uh, okay, this is Winnie from the Asian American Federation of Florida, and we are working really intensely with uh, our members, which we uh, have a different languages that we are covering it, and so we have already identified that the help line in the in the various Asian languages to help 
uh, our Asian American voters who have language challenge to, to that way to outreach them so they were understanding and for get out get out their vote on the election day. And then also we are working very closely with our as um, uh, Selena mentioned about the uh, language newspaper. We are working very closely with our ethnic newspaper, the Korean, the Chinese, and Vietnamese to also get out this information to their community. So in the way when it comes to the close to the election time, and we will have our, we will be putting a lot of volunteer on this area as well. And by the way, if you've got another group, if I may, uh, Vietnamese Americans also uh, saying that the in-language assistance is something that would make them more likely to vote. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Christine, do you have anything to add? Um, no. Um, I see that there are no more questions. If you do have a question, please press star 1 on your telephone. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for another question, um, me, do you have any final remarks? I wanted to speak to the question about language assistance. I think it's very critical at uh, several stages. Um, one, uh, I think in the, my earlier comments, I mentioned the fact that uh, voter protection at the polls is very, very critical to make sure that um, we've expanded throughout different pockets. Uh, uh, not only in Florida, but all across the country where, uh, depending on the concentration of the Asian American populations, sometimes when they actually go to the polls to be able to have access to the, to language assistance at the polls or to have access to the ballot in language, um, in the Section 203 states has been very, very, uh, critical for people to feel comfortable and to feel that they do have access to the ballots. The other piece is that I think when people once people, we actually get them registered to vote or to the polls and get them in front of a ballot, we also need to make sure that the process itself doesn't disenfranchise people. So that's why uh, the voter protection programs uh, need to be in place to make sure that we not only educate um, and train people in our community to understand and to know their rights, but that we're also uh, actively engaging in providing language um, uh, language appropriate materials like palm cards uh, in language that they can take with them so that if there are, if, if there's a community that's experiencing voter suppression activities or where they feel like they're not getting the assistance that they're entitled to uh, legally, then there is at least a hotline where they can call and get that assistance. So um, the language access to the ballot is one issue, but the other area where it's very, very important to provide language assistance is in the voter protection area. Thanks so much, Mi. We have a few more questions. Quan, um, please ask your question. Uh, yes, this is Quan Cal from Florida. I also, um, in addition to being a partner at Spectrum Knowledge, I also chair the State Rep Advisory Council for 12 years. Uh, I'm delighted to hear of the work that Christine Chen and Winnie Tang are doing. Uh, my question is actually um, a follow-up of the last question on turning out the vote and on getting... Um, on getting voters um, to have what Ms. Lex suggests in terms of palm cards in the appropriate language, and we've done that in terms of translating them in a number of languages, including Vietnamese. My question is, given the lack of awareness of or the lack of involvement at the national level and in the congressional campaign, how do we change it so that the use of um, ethnic media will be standard practice and will also address more issues that are connected directly to the to the communities themselves. Um, we actually learned a lesson in this in sports when the Heat just won the, the latest championship and the largest community group that uh, turned in um, was the Filipino community because of the ethnicity of their coach. Um, that was tough, and with my answer. Thank you. Does anyone um, want to, um, Winnie or Christine, can you address Kwan's question? Oh, may I ask uh, also uh, say, uh, in addition to what we are planning to do on the early voting day, we want to be able to collect our 
volunteer into one poll and one setting so we can provide an effectively language uh, assistance during the uh, during the uh, election day. And because as as far as based on the census number, the Asian community population is spread out the entire state of Florida, and then we don't like uh, New York or San Francisco or even Atlanta have a very concentrated Asian popu uh, 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 population area. So in order to make it work in the in Florida to really capitalize the early voting time, and then when we have identified a site in Orlando in Miami, in Palm Beach County, on, on Jacksonville. So those way we can work with our community uh, collectively, the volunteer, the language volunteer at one site, and also can also have the um, the, vote, the voter protection uh, program also working really well because we know that most people coming here also have the language challenge issue. So that's how beside the pump card and we are working to, uh, to work to really have one specific Asian American voting day to help our community to be more in tune to get out of the vote and to be comfortable to go to the poll and because there's a language volunteer at the poll to help them out to cash their, uh, their ballot. Um, this is me, this is me more. I, I, I like to echo something that I uh, mentioned earlier with respect to this question that was asked. You know, it is great that the Asian American community has had to leverage uh, private resources in order to do the translations, in order to make sure that we educate our community about their rights to vote. Uh, but the aim of this voter survey really is to answer the question that has often been posed by mainstream uh, political leaders and party, parties and candidates that says, one, we don't know how to outreach in this community, uh, or that maybe doing outreach into this community is just an afterthought. And what, what, what we are trying to demonstrate in this voter survey is that we're giving you the issue areas uh, where you now will have the language and how to actually explain your outreach to the community. Secondly, we want to make the case that the demographics as well as the voting behavior uh, ought to create a compelling interest for political parties and candidates to look at embedding into their core strategy of voter engagement how to do it in this community, or else they will miss an opportunity. So actually, the, the, these survey results are uh, a challenge to uh, any candidates and any political party who are looking to uh, be in the victory circle to say, perhaps this is a population that we need to begin uh, to engage and to invest in resources. Hi, this is Christine from APIVO. I, I just want to echo what Mi was saying because, you know, essentially there's so much that the nonprofits can do, but it's also that we need partners within the campaign so that way they actually engage our community and talk to our community about the issues that we care about. Um, also, I want to point out that with AAJC and API Vote, there is actually going to be a, um, a national hotline um, where we will actually have um, volunteers that will actually be able to answer questions on Election Day um, in Vietnamese, Chinese, and Korean. Um, that will actually be publicized working with the ethnic press and our community partners um, in Florida as well as in Virginia. Thanks so much. We have the final question from William Simonich. Go ahead, please. Hi, uh, this is Bill Simonich. I'm an attorney with Kano Gates in Miami, Florida, and I'm secretary of the National Asian Pacific American Bar Association. Um, there's a number of key differences that were pointed out by the folks who conducted the poll, distinguishing Florida APA voters and their attitudes from uh, what they see on a nationwide basis. You had mentioned it early in the call. I think you also did an oversampling in some other states, including Georgia. So I was curious as to whether the Florida responses were similar to Georgian responses, I guess the context of my question is whether there's a sense that this is a Florida distinction or a Southern distinction. You know, I, you. I said that too fast. Great question. I think I said it too fast. We did not do Georgia, and I apologize. We did Florida, Illinois, Nevada, and Virginia. And I don't know that we can project from Virginia. Virginia and, and uh, Florida were quite different. But, of course, uh, much of the Asian-American Pacific Islander population in Northern Virginia, which isn't really that 
southern, if you will. So that is a really good question that you asked, but I don't think we have the data to look at it. And I apologize for saying that too fast. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining us today. If anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to reach out to myself, Leonie Campbell-Williams, at the Asian American Justice Center, or you can also reach out to Toby. Um, our information was on the media advisory. Uh, the call is also being recorded, and it will be posted on the AJC website once we have the MP3 file for people to go back and, and listen to. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. I hope everyone enjoys the rest of your day. And again, Thank you. Will, Thank you. That will conclude today's call. Thank you again for your participation. You may now disconnect. Thanks.